today the input built-in function in Python 3. So what I have here is a Python 2 shell, right? 2.7. And you guys may remember that there used to be two inputs. So there was raw input, uh, throw in some, and then there was regular input. And you can see that the output was a little bit different. And there was just generally two different input functions. However, let's get out of here, clean this up, and let's open up a Python 3 shell. So you can see we're in 3.7 now. And if we type raw input, that actually doesn't exist anymore. Uh, that's no longer in the Python language. So what we have available to us is the good old input function. Cool, so with that out of the way, what can we use the input function for? Well, there is one optional argument, and we can add a little bit of a prompt in here um, and say uh, type after this, right? And we can add whatever, um, hey, what's up? And our output is gonna be, hey, what's up? And the prompt here is not included in the message. The prompt is never included in the message. So say we sign this to a variable A, and we do input, we have a little prompt, type here, and then we type again, uh, hey, what's up? And if we wanna print out that A, what do you think we're gonna get? Are we gonna get just, hey, what's up, or are we gonna get this whole thing? Well, you'd be right in saying that we're just gonna get that value that we have inputted. The prompt is just there to help us. And learning by example, uh, I guess you guys have seen that we can use variables to assign stuff to, uh, to input, to the, the output, I guess you could say. Uh, so we can do uh, 111, right? And then B becomes 111. But you'll note that the type for B is a string. It's always gonna be a string, even though it's numbers that we have inputted here. So what you can do is, wrap int around this if you really, or whatever whatever type you want, right? And so when we do our input and we check the type again, we're gonna get type int. So just a tip for you guys, whatever uh, type that you want, uh, you can just wrap it around the input function. I would note though that if you tried to put something like a, a string in here, you're gonna get, you're gonna run into issues, right? Because you're trying to cast that to an int and in a normal application, just do some kind of uh, try accept lock and you should be good to go. One other thing that I thought would be cool to talk about is that we can use input in for loops or just in, uh, in files. It doesn't need to be in the shell necessarily. So I think you know what's gonna happen here, right? We're gonna loop over this three times and we're gonna get uh, three uh, requests for input. So we can run this and we can say 111, 222, 333. I'm just adding random stuff. And yeah, that input ran three times, but we didn't really capture that output anywhere. So here's a bit more complicated example. I'm just gonna copy paste in here and make this fit. All right, so in this program, we're gonna start off with an input. We're gonna choose how many times we're gonna iterate. Uh, then we're going to input a bunch of stuff, and then we're going to sum up our inputs after that. So if we run this, how many times do we want to loop? Uh, let's say four. Um, and now we're in our input stage here. And so we'll do, uh, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 nine. And when I press enter, then we finished our for loop and it's gonna sum that up nicely for us. So what's this example about? I basically just wanted to show you that you can do inputs in for loops and just in other, other interesting places, not just in the shell. Thanks for watching.